Okay. <laughs> uh, cool. Good to go. Well, welcome guys to our latest Best of the Best webinar hosted by Noveg. And today, today, uh, this is going to be our first webinar of 2013, and hopefully we're not going to have anything crazy happen technically. So, all right. So for episode 62, we have a preview of RealFlow 2013, uh, a fluid revolution, and this is hosted by Gustavo Sanchez. Uh, since the first previews and release of RealFlow's large-scale fluid solver, Hybrido 2, I hope I pronounced that correctly, at the beginning of the year, the industry has eagerly anticipated the release of RealFlow 2013. This webinar will guide you through some of the major new features and changes that you can expect to find in the latest and greatest version of Next Limit's cutting-edge fluid simulation technology. Now, here to talk about RealFlow is Next Limit's own product manager, Gustavo Sanchez. Uh, Hi, everyone. Yeah, see, so Gustavo Sanchez, a uh, real person. <laughs> so this is good. <laughs> uh, <It> is well, <laughs> uh, Gustavo has uh, over 10 years of experience in the industry. Uh, he has worked with uh, major post-production companies in both London and Madrid. Uh, he's, he joined Next Limit in 2008, and he continues to be the real flow product manager since May 2011. So uh, before we really, really kick off, and as the online uh, leading online software design store, uh, we pretty much have the best prices around. Um, this is the product page. Uh, this is the latest product that we have for RealFlow right now. So RealFlow 2013 is an app. But if you want to get the latest version of RealFlow, you can visit our product page at NoVeg. Uh, as the leading online design software store, we pretty much have the best prices around. And it is available, RealFlow 2012 is available as digital delivery in the United States only. And um, pay zero sales tax. So if you have any questions, questions, uh, feel free to speak with our sales specialist, Bob, at bob at NoVeg.com. In addition, you can be sure that when RealFlow 2013 is out, we'll be working with Next Limit and Gustavo to make it a part of our catalog. Okay, and also uh, we've created at NoVeg three com online communities as that online place where you can collaborate, communicate with other like-minded professionals. At our communities, we scour the internet for the latest industry buzz to share with you guys. So furthermore, we encourage the community members to uh, participate in the discussion. The process to sign up is a breeze, and with that, you have access to a weekly community newsletter um, where we break down the week's most interesting industry headlines. So for access to discussions that matter, sign up and register today. And uh, I want to talk about what we have upcoming in our next webinar, uh, episode 63. Uh, get a sneak peek at uh, Cinema 4D Release 14's most powerful new features. Uh, from fast and intuitive sculpting tools, enhanced dynamics, new camera tools, and many others, uh, whether you are a visualization artist, motion designer, illustrator, or animator, you'll find something to love about Release 14. Maxon President and CEO Paul Babb will be presenting this upcoming webinar live, and uh, this will be an excellent opportunity for those who are interested to learn about the new changes and the features. Uh, so send your burning questions in. Uh, registration is free, but space is limited, so for more information on how to sign up, check it out at noveg.com forward slash webinar forward slash slash 63. And going forward, uh, we're trying this new thing uh, where you can interact with us live. Uh, if you have any questions for um, going forward for this webinar or any upcoming webinars, type in your question and put in the hashtag NovegWebinar. Um, we will respond. Uh, Aurora will be there to respond live uh, if and when she can. Um, at Noveg Store at our uh, Twitter account. So if you have any questions, do that. Uh, the presentation will itself, uh, today's presentation will be about 40 minutes long, and then just a bit, Gustavo will uh, take over the rest of the presentation. I'll stop talking. Um, if you have any questions at any time during the presentation, please post them into the chat window so that we can answer them live um, during the Q&A session. All right, and uh, not this slide. All right, so I will switch over the presenter to Gustavo right now. Gustavo, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, and here okay. we are. Um, in three seconds, I will switch you to the uh, make you the presenter. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Ooh. All right, guys. Um, hello from Nicole, Madrid. Um, 
Uh, thank you, Kevin, for the introduction. I'm recording this today from home, so if you hear in the background two little monkeys, this will be my daughters, just so you're aware of the noises, if they are <laughs> any. Um, we're here today to show you a technical preview of what's coming with RealFlow in a couple of months' time. Um, for us, this, as the title says, is a fluid revolution, also an evolution in the product, but um, there are way too many changes in this one to make it one of the best uh, versions ever of RealFlow. So, to see a bit where are we coming from, I'm going to quickly show you something that uh, we haven't shown many times, but uh, since this is uh, Next Limit's 15th anniversary, I thought it would be good to show this little clip. This was the first ever simulation produced with RealFlow, and, and this is just a thousand particles simulated in a machine. I, I believe uh, Victor Gonzalez, the owner and creator, one of the creators of RealFlow, mentioned that it was like uh, an overnight on a Pentium 4 machine. This is where we're coming from 15 years ago. Uh, now, we are producing massive amount of uh, data and I'm pretty sure you have seen already the huge simulation that we are capable of with this uh, latest version. Also, um, since many people believe or doesn't really understand the whole concept of RealFlow, I want to quickly show you what RealFlow um, ecosystem, so to speak, is um, where we get like the GUI, uh, where we uh, or the user produces most of the simulations. Then there are real flow nodes which are the common lines where you can speed up things by sending chunks of your simulation or different wedges and in the case of hybrid or uh, different secondary elements to get simulated on a farm uh, over multiple machines and uh, as I said it will speed up time. And then there is also the render kit technology that we introduced a few years back to uh, help with meshing at render time mainly. Um, so when you think real flow, don't think only in a single standalone product that will be doing everything. Just think globally in the whole pipeline where you interact with the 3D package and real flow by using the uh, simulation nodes in your farm and also the render kit plugin that hook up in your 3D package. So without further delay, let's start with uh, the main features in this uh, wonderful version that we have produced for you. Hydro 2 is um, probably the most exciting one for all the users and it will bring and uh, hopefully uh, we expect this to be the definitive version of, for RealFlow to uh, achieve the large scale simulations and we have two main elements inside Hadoop 2. One is high flip which is the, our first flip solver implemented inside RealFlow and why is it important to have a flip solver? Uh, main reason is it doesn't have any uh, bounciness, which was partly uh, one of the reasons that hybrid one wasn't that widely adopted. And the other one is that flip solver can go as low as one subset per frame, so simulations will run pretty fast and they will be pretty stable. And then we also have the high SPA, which is what we call the secondary elements that we're going to be outputting from the base of the simulation that we will be creating with high flip. Um, really important, we will be trying to keep as much as we can and I can assure you that if you know how to use Havio in the first uh, versions, you will easily move into Havio 2. I'm going to show you now some of the videos that you may have seen already. Just to illustrate how much detail we can get and how fast this can run. Um, the machines where we test this in the office are not huge machines, they are normal i7 machines uh, with 12 gigabytes of RAM and simulations can go crazy in terms of number of particles. We have even managed to produce recently uh, one that unfortunately I cannot show you but it goes over 400 million particles in a single simulation. But as I said, the, the level of detail that this solver allows us and the complexity of the interaction between the simulated uh, fluids and the animation, uh, it's really impressive, at least. Um, 
we hope that uh, everybody will be happy with the results that this new iteration on Hybrido will give them. See that we also keep the uh, dual connection between the rigid body solution inside the flow and the fluids. And this particular simulation uh, we really like. Uh, by the way, all or pretty much all of this uh, simulation have been done by Luis Miguel Mora, which is uh, you may know him for his blog. He was one of our colleagues in the office. This one is pretty cool as well. This is of the interaction. Um, let me go back one sec because I think I oh, let's go back again. I want to show you especially this one. Um, find it this the one with the, this one. It's pretty cool the way that the water interacts with the fans and all the media that gets produced from there and till the very end, where we get 126 million particles and tons of detail uh, that doesn't get lost. And we will see that uh, since we're producing this in the base of the simulation, this is very important. This is just the base of the simulation. Imagine all the details that we're going to be having on top of this. We're going to have secondary elements in the form of splashes, foam, uh, mist, displacement. So these simulations will be amazing in terms of detail because just from the base of the solver we get this quality. Uh, we will be running this on a single box but then all the secondary elements that you may imagine that you have you, you're going to be putting on top of this can be split into different boxes uh, using clear flow nodes in your farm. And to the next topic. Um, same workflow. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how things were done in 2012 and how things will be done now in 2013 in a minute. But before that, we will move to the next uh, main feature because that will link one with the other. And the next feature, and we consider this one to be as important, if not more important even than the Hydro tool at some extent, which is the adoption of uh, nodal systems inside the flow. And many people uh, we're asking for this uh, to be happening ages ago and we didn't get to it until now because now is the right time for us to do it. And we are adding nodal systems in Serbia flow at two different levels. One is uh, at the scene setup level, which is the relationship nodes, and the other one is the simulation graphs and batch graph nodes, which are kind of a visual programming type of system. Let's quickly open real flow so you can know what I'm talking about. I'm going to open first Realflow 2012 and quickly show you how things were done in 2012. Uh, you know the interface it has a nodes panel and global and exclusive links. So for instance, doing a simple thing like um, cycle meter, adding some force like gravity, putting some collision object like a plane, and simply hitting simulate, let's say a simple. If we hit simulate, three clicks, we have something running, and it works. So it's pretty simple, um, very easy to pick up. Everything gets connected to this pond here, or got connected in 2012, where everything was connected with everything. Uh, that wasn't probably the most efficient way, especially when you were dealing with tons of elements in the scene. So an alternative, which is, in my opinion, tidier, is using exclusive link, or was using exclusive link. And if we hit simulate, uh, we see that it achieves exactly the same result. Problem with this was that we could do things like this, which didn't really make any sense, among other things uh, that were possible and never got sorted uh, using this link system. So that's partly the reason that we moved to a, a different system, which is the nodes uh, as a relationship to create the scene setup. But I'm going to quickly open also a very complex scene so you understand why we moved to the other. And this is no other than 
one of the many uh, versions of uh, my colleague Victor Sanchez, who is also today online answering your questions, work on a few years back. I'm pretty sure you remember this one that had a ship wreck. And I think you can see it here. I don't know if this video is going to play all right, but you will remember this one. We had the shipwreck and we had all the nice waves crashing. That was one of the first, actually you see here, it's 305, hybrid of first evolution. And of course, Maxwell Render. Well, that scene was extremely complex. And you see here that uh, we didn't use global links. We used exclusive links uh, because we needed to keep everything under control. But you see the number of elements that the scene had. It's like tons of elements, tons of IDOCs, which is which are the ones that we use to send to the job manager and to the farm all the notes. But unless you are Victor and probably Victor itself, he wouldn't make any sense of this scene right now because it was so long ago that he worked on this scene uh, and with no reference whatsoever on what's linked with rather than okay, the grid domain is connected to all this here. Uh, it would be really, really tricky to understand what's going on in this scene. And this is probably one of the main reasons why we moved to Realflow 2013. And, and open another Realflow 2013. So Realflow 2013, you now see that we have changed slightly the interface. Uh, you can create your own layout as you wish, of course. But the first thing that you notice is that we still keep the uh, notes tab, but we don't have exclusive and global links. What we have is the relationship editor. If we were going to try and do pretty much the same as we had uh, in that simple example I was doing earlier, we'll have a circle and you instantly see that we have a note here in the viewport. Uh, can I stop this for a sec? Kevin, is it going all right? No problems in sound? Uh, everything fine? Good? Okay, and I continue. Excellent. So let's get back. So I was saying, uh, now that you, you can simply create a node in the same way as we were doing before uh, by using the top shell, or we can also hit the tab key and start typing what we want. Like in this case, we will add a gravity. And we have the gravity here. We see here that we don't get anything connected. This is because we didn't have the equivalent to global links selected, which is or what will be the default hand. So if we had that, and we are now the plane, that plane we get linked to a hat, which, as I said, is pretty much the, the equivalent to the global links in all versions. So if we wanted to have everything in global links, simply track a line and connect all these three, and if we just save it and test, and we hit simulate, we get the same result as we had in 2012 for previous versions. So it's pretty straightforward to have something working. Um, if we're using halves, how do we know what is connected with what? Well, if we right click, there is a show implicit connection here that shows us how things are going. And color coding also helps to know that jello is for geometry, as we have seen all here simply a blue, red are for forces or diamonds, and blue are for emitters, like particle based emitters. If we don't want to use halves, how do we do exclusive links between this? Simple, as you may imagine, it's just a simple click that you want the circle to be affected by the gravity on the plane. And if we reset and simulate, we get again the same result. So nothing magic, still Realflow way easy to use, nothing really complicated. If we had a complex scene um, that we will have, of course, once we start working with uh, tons of nodes and things like hybrid, etc., there are things that still uh, can help us work. And something that I can't show you right now because we, uh, I forgot to mention, this is a very early version. This is like an alpha yeah, still, and we're working towards beta right now. But this version can crash, so um, I cannot show you because we have managed to create compatibility in the last few weeks. 
um, and I cannot open all scenes, but uh, you will be able to open all scenes from the Opera 2012 inside 2013. And as you may imagine, since we didn't have notes, how will all these scenes come inside the Opera 2013? Well, they will create the notes, but they will come a bit matched up one on top of the other. So we have something here that's called Auto Layout that um, simply move the notes apart. So, oh, and they are live, steady. So, we have the notes one on top of the other and we just simply tell them to separate and that's it. So, if we had a huge uh, amount of notes, they will span and uh, move apart and then we will start uh, collecting them, adding notes that we can have now and this, whatever, whatever. So we can simplify and make uh, a visual representation of what we have and add, uh, for example, notes for our colleagues to pick up our scene, etc. That's why it will also be easier for people that uh, are sharing uh, assets to share, <laughs> basically. So, um, what else was in here? Okay, we also have a spreadsheet. Not in this scene, I mean, it doesn't make much sense to use it in this scene, but if we have a complex scene, we could disconnect things at once or connect them, which can be really, really handy. Sometimes when you have tons of elements, you don't want to uh, do them at once. Uh, also, we can group things and they will come it's a different element and they will still be linked or we can simply get them linked. And if we expand this, we see that the two elements are inside. And if we had, uh, uh, what is it? Okay, show the okay, change these connections. Oh, okay, this is the bag now. Good, move. <laughs> Nothing to see here. All right, let's move to the next feature before I keep breaking it. Um, we have graphs. We were saying, okay, these were the relationship graphs, so it's like, okay, we basically basically setting up the scene in, a, in an easier way, in a neater way than we used to. But the power of the graphs in Sarah Flow are in the simulation graphs and also in the batch graphs. In previous versions, we used to, um, let me close this one, we used to, um, code in Python or C++ in order to achieve complex things, right? So we access it uh, at the particle level and we access geometry and we go to the vertices and well, users needed a minimum level of control of Python in order to do that things. What we are implementing now is something similar to visual programming basic notes. You can think uh, at the simulation and batch graphs inside the flow as something similar to what you have in 3ds Mac with thinking particles, in Houdini with Bobs, or in ICE in Sofimash. And you can find them here. There are batch graphs in the same way that we had batch scripts. And also we have the simulation flow which is the old version, uh, old window that we call simulation events is now being renamed to simulation flow and this is no other than this one that I have opened here in this uh, simple example of something similar to a, a firework. So if I reset that and I hit simulate, we see that there is something going on there like some particles and some trays. If we wanted to do something similar to this one, which is nothing else but taking this particle position and as it moves, adding a trail of particles back, we will need to know which functions to query, etc., etc., etc. I have open from our Preflow home page. If you go to resources, you know that this is still an old page. We have a really nice new website, but we don't have a new resources site. This is because we've been waiting to 2013 release to rebound this site and kind of um, adapt it so it can host also 
the autographs, the idea is that we will have a community um, around these real flow graphs and people will be able to share in the same way they, they were sharing these uh, Python scripts. So um, I wanted to show you if we go to the Python scripts and we type trail, we find this um, trail particles by Jorge Alex, one of our uh, colleagues as well. And I just downloaded it. So you see, um, probably not exactly the same because it does have a uh, it colors the particle, etc. But it's doing essentially the same, doing some trail particles in here, which will need all this code and half of it. If we go inside Airflow now, and I can pretty much delete this, that, um, that, 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 because I did it a bit more complicated, we could do the same thing that you saw here in the in that script with this for. Uh, notes. The way you do that is let me delete it. I don't know how it does work. It doesn't break for me now. We add um, the particles, so we type in the same way. Sorry, forgot to ask, mention. In the same way that we added the script here, we add now the graphs. And as I have one here, I just need to come into the graph window, hit the tab key again. And I start finding my notes so I can do get particles. Get particle. I come here and I select the meter I want to get the particles from. Then I find the particle channel. Particle channel. I say particles to particles. The channel I want to use is work position. I don't want any of the other. I want one position. And then I want to add these particles. Positions to a different emitter. Which is simply container. And then we will need an evaluator node which is normally the one that closes the chain and executes all this. So if we just simply run this one, it should produce exactly the same result that you saw earlier. So nice simulation with a few clicks and just four notes, three notes, that you don't need to know what they are doing underneath. So th the power of this is uh, it's going to be amazing and we are really confident that people will go crazy. Um, we have, I don't know, I believe we have like over 200 nodes already implemented and we plan to have way more as uh, on release and as the release progresses in uh, successive uh, versions. And to show you another example that we have here running, let me see if we clear this one, more things that you can do with notes, for example, I could um, get some basic right. I could use a sign distance field from a geometry that I import and I'm gonna be importing this model right now. Let me rename it. So we have this nice frog object. And what I want to do is to have some particles on top of it from this emitter and get those particles um, intersecting the actual volume of the, of the frog. So if I put, let's use some particles so we go a bit faster here. If we got all those particles, okay, let me move it. So let's go. All those particles, we want the intersection with the head and we want all those particles to be removed. So let me just get a bit of this and I'll show you uh, what's going on in a second round here. Let's save. As I said, this is a, um, 
an alpha version and it might go a bit crazy if we don't what I'm doing here essentially is I'm getting an object the prop and creating its mesh and from the mesh I'm creating a piston field and this actually isn't nothing but a representation of the shape but not in the form of a vertices on face but like a, we could call it like a um, an area around uh, the object which will help us query the distances from the particles to that uh, shell so to speak that uh, host the object so we're going to be creating a distance field and sampling it we when we create a distance field what we do basically is to, we create a grid and we assign values with the distances in the grid from the actual geometry that is the, the goal that we want to achieve when we want to create that distance field and we assign the, the values of the distance from the geometry up, outside so then when we have something that is going to be colliding with the geometry we just query the, the position of our particles for example in relation to that distance field so in here we have the standard emitter and we are linking that to the square we getting its particles and we sampling the position of those particles with the distance field and once we have that we filter in the particles that are outside and created a mask and that will give us the result which is the particles that are inside the distance field and those are the ones that we're going to be removing so if we simply run this graph now it's crash on me let's say creating volume somewhere let me reset and again All right, this is the demo effect. It's not doing anything right now. Okay, what's going on? This is a prop, it's a square. And maybe ah, I will have this one active. Oh well, something had to go wrong. It, it wouldn't be a demo if it wasn't. Okay, this was supposed to be cutting those particles, but it's not doing it right now. So maybe I'm going to be running a different example. Um, let me check this. Get the new one. Faster one, uh, since we're passing half an hour now. Imagine that we have um, something like this geometry, and we want to emit from them. So I'm going to put some keyframes in here. And some different thing here, so it's something like that. Quickly, we want to emit from that uh, geometry, so we get the object, we get the mesh, get the vertices, get the object and the vertices. And now we get a vertex channel. So we want to get we want to get the position of those vertices and the velocity of those vertices. Oops, I just duplicate everything. This one. And the position of those vertices. So we create particles on a new emitter. The standard emitter. In this case we're going to be using a container. So we're going to have that container. Okay. And we're going to add the particles. Actually we don't need that one. We can do it straight away. Positions. 
velocities and the emitter will be the fire. And then we evaluate. Okay. So if we say this one mission and maybe just put the totals simply hit simulate, we should get a trail of particles being emitted from that object. I think they are liquid, that's why they are not moving away. So this is another quick sample of something that isn't difficult, but it will take a bit. And this is not picking up, oh yeah, it is picking up the, the, the velocity. It will take a little bit longer to be generated by using Python scripting instead of uh, simple nodes. So you can see here, and I'm going to move to the next topic, um, the power of using uh, real flow graphs inside of 2013. I'm sorry about the one that didn't work. That was cool. Next one is Alembic. Uh, Alembic is um, an open source format that we have been looking at for quite a while. And uh, it has become, or is becoming standard right now in the industry. So we decided that uh, it was about time that we implemented it. And we are not doing only Alembic for geometry caches, but also for particles. And that will help quite a lot, we hope, with the hydro simulations because um, with Alembic, there are tons of things that can be done, like selecting subsets from the files and also compressing them. Inside we upload, um, one can find Alembic if I just simply create a few elements so we can go to Expo Central. We can find Alembic everywhere. So we go to Explore Central and we see that we have Alembic sequences here where we can select or deselect and only export what we want to export. It's a way of um, reducing the file sizes. We also have here uh, the compression settings for Alembic. And in this version that I'm running right now, for the good fluid, we do have GDC format, which was our proprietary format. This is going to be deprecated, and we will only have Alembic caches for hybrid together with another open source format that we haven't mentioned here, which is Fil3D. So we will have Alembic plus Fil3D uh, for hybrid to have its full power, and that will help also integrating uh, hybrid hybrid too in other platforms because it won't need to use our formats, but uh, open source formats. Uh, same goes for real wave. We also have Alembic sequences and all the objects in the scene. We'll also have um, Alembic animation caches, etc. There will be also tools. Uh, we don't know yet if they will go under tools or there will be command line to combine multiple Alembic files and also to convert between formats. And before I close that, um, good thing about the Lambic, close this one, when talking um, geometry, is that it wasn't possible before to do something like this. Let me find the models. If we had something like this that had multiple pieces, and this is an object that has animation. And we said, for example, oops, I just want the legs. I don't want these bits. We can now delete it. This with our SD format wasn't possible before. Even better, the other works, something that was uh, a bit of a problem with the old SD file and previous version of Airflow. Not major, but it, it was always a pain. And if we wanted to duplicate, we now can duplicate bits and it will follow in the transform. So Alembic is a cool move for us and for everything that uh, has to be moved front and to real flow. 
next feature is Maxwell Render, and this is also a big one, and mainly because this will allow to have background previews in the farm. Um, you don't need now to block your machine when doing a real flow preview. You can send your previews to real flow nodes in your farm. And that won't cost a Maxwell license. With the real flow node, you will get Maxwell inside real flow because we are using just Maxwell um, Fire, which is the interactive render engine for previsualization. We are not using the full Maxwell render but the one that comes with fire, which is like a draft mode, so to speak. Another good thing about Maxwell is that it will come with the fluid material presets, and that will help quite a lot when trying to show someone um, how your fluids should look. A quick example here, if we, for example, create um, a real wave. Let's put the camera. So, maybe we just need to open window. Let's close this one. And we say, okay, we have that uh, real web there. Let's add it uh, statistical spectrum so we get more detail. You will notice now that every single um, real flow object has a Maxwell render tab. And if you come here, you can decide whether that object is renderable or not, and which material it's going to be using. As I said, there will be quite a few presets for materials, like honey, chocolate, blood, da, da, da. then we have water, water pure, water ocean. In this case, we would like to use water ocean. And in the case of real wave, we will be able to um, use a tiling feature that could help us creating an infinite ocean without having to do anything else. If I hit F6 now, and before I do that, I'll probably have to go to the Maxwell Render settings, which are here, and not many, so as you see, easy, simple as always with Maxwell. You just play with intensity, uh, whether you want a physical sky, or you want to play some uh, light emitters in the scene, how do you want the day to be, stone, dusk, the quality of your previsualization, the higher, the longer it will take to refresh in the interactive, something level that you want to achieve, if you want more or not motion blur, and the global scale that is important when you try and to work with the material that have um, light transmittance, because if you, I mean, this will uh, work correctly when you have the right or wrong scale coming from your 3D platform. It would be a way of adjusting this kind of basically. So right now, if I hit F6, I get instantly that, which is an ocean, by the single batch. If I wanted to um, tile that out, I could say, let's create 10 tiles by 10 tiles, which is quite a lot. It's easy. I have created an ocean with just two clicks. And they put the plane underneath so we can see better how this looks. And I don't need to give it any material, but if I hit F6 again, we see that we are getting a nice ocean look in a few seconds. It might take quite a while since we're doing quite a few things right now in the machine, but I mean, it gives you the sense and the look and feel of what you're doing uh, without having to send your simulations to a 3D artist that's going to be lighting the scene, etc. So let me just get rid of the real wave and add a simple circular meter. Let's just say we're seeing something different. Um, let's say we don't export anything, it simulates. Uh, maybe oh, yeah, everything's colliding, so it should collide with the plane when it hits it. All right, come on, right. We 
have it collected in there. Let's get more, let's get more. All right. And now we create a mesh and we mesh it up. And before we do that, let's say, okay, the mesh is renderable, the particles, we don't want to see them. And the mesh is going to be honey. If we build the mesh and we hit F6, there you go. That's the beauty of Maxwell inside the Airflow. You get a nice look for your simulation straight away. And you can send these previews, as I said, to the front, to the real flow nodes. And, and that will be great because you will split, split the time that you take doing your previews by simply sending them to multiple machines that will be calculating uh, single frame each or range of frame each, whatever. And Maxwell has the best uh, quality of any rendering in the market, so you get that almost for free inside your flow. So next, let me just close this one. It's Vivo Plus, is how we call the work that we have put into making your experience when using the flow and loads of detail and data in the GUI. If I go again and just open the flow, actually I think I have it open. It's yeah, this one. Didn't need to open new one. This is a scene I was working on um, a long ago and this had kind of a stream or a river and it's loading the cache. It has 31,394,000 something particles. In any other software and previous version, to do this wasn't possible at all, was it? So this is what beautiful class is. It gives you the ability to work with massive quantities in the viewport. Uh, actually, I was showing here only 10% of those. If I go 100%, still moves freely, no problem whatsoever. We have also added um, uh, not only the percentage, but the ability to display the particles as arrows and spheres. You see here, the arrows are huge. Let's say five. So these are arrows now that may give you a different look. Maybe you want to do a preview, open geo preview with that, or maybe you want to go and create spheres. So these are the spheres now. You see. So. Cool feature, especially because it allows to load massive amount of particles and it will only depend on the amount of RAM that you have in your graphics card. But I'm running on a graphics card, very domestic one. Uh, I think it only has one gigabyte RAM, so and it, this runs pretty fast, especially with coins, it, it kind of flies, so I don't think we need more than that to be able to work with massive scale scenes. Next feature, and we go back to presentation, is RenderKit 2013. RenderKit 2013 um, needed to be here because with the amount of detail that we're getting from Hyvio 2, we couldn't allow ourselves not to get new machine algorithms to keep that detail. And Hector Artal, which is our man doing RenderKit, is doing an amazing job. And I'll show you a couple of examples of um, how cool the message will look. Like this one, you see that we keep all the detail, all the fine detail that we get in the simulations, and we still get um, flat data when they do need to be flat. So before, this wasn't possible if we wanted to have this and vice versa. So a big thanks up for Hector because he's uh, also Angel who is working together with Hector in this one. And they're doing an amazing job in this. And this is another example where you see that when there is a flat area, it is flat. When there is thin detail, you get thinner 
detail here and totally flat in here. Uh, this is, believe me, this is pretty awesome what they do in here. Right. So this is for Renekit. The Caronte Polydynamics, which is a polydynamics engine that we have inside RealFlow, and we have decided for the version that we were not going to be putting uh, way too many features, in fact, not many features in it, but making sure that it was way better in terms of speed, stability, and we managed, well, the guys managed, um, to get some fracture enhancements that uh, are pretty cool. I'm going to try and show you something now. Um, mm -hmm. We'll try to answer the questions. Okay, where am I? Um, here with the current. Okay, I need to go to the videos. So, current 2019, which is this one. Let's see if I manage to create a loop here. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Okay, these simulations as many of the other ones I was showing have been created by Luis Miguel and he really has fun destroying and <laughs> breaking things. Um, as you see, stability, don't see jittering anywhere. It runs relatively fast. This simulation was 16 minutes something. So something I forgot to mention earlier and probably could go right now in here is that as with other things, um, you see here we added a command line option. For hybrid, though, we have added this um, min max sub steps which control the stepping of the simulations. And for Caronte, it is down here now. And you see, we don't know if this is going to be 100% the final uh, naming or even set of parameters, but there will be more than this. Quality and anti jitter is something that makes things go to sleep or don't vibrate and the level of quality that you want. And also forgot to mention way too many things. You see, there are way too many cool things in this version that I keep forgetting good ones. We also have for hybrid uh, some GPU acceleration based on OpenCL. And if you want to know exactly what we have been doing with that, you can go to NVIDIA website and Angel Tena did a presentation last year uh, where he explained exactly how we're using hybrid uh, on the GPU. You can find your system information and if it, if it runs with the GPU. This is my graphics card. It has OpenCL 1.1, which is what is needed. Nothing else that. So uh, we're going to count it. Sorry, I just derailed like that track. And um, this shows the coolness of the new fracturing tools. Uh, pretty much everything is in there, all the new fracturing bits and pieces that we has been trying. And you also see that uh, this is using multi-joints, which will be more stable, more robust in this version. And show you another clip. So this uh, simulation had multiple levels of fracture, multiple elements fractured with different types of um, uh, fracture types. The coloring codes mean that uh, this is uh, based on the stability and speed enhancement that I was talking about. When the pieces are red, and right now this color coding is just uh, in the framework that we Luis was using to simulate this, not in Flow Alpha yet, so I cannot show you. Uh, this means that if it's red, they have full energy, they keep losing energy as they uh, evolve, and then they become gradually white. When they white, they get taken out of the solver, so the solver runs faster. And then if anything interacts with them, again, they pick up some energy, they change color, blah, 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 they go back to red or whatever it has to go. That's how it works. So the same simulation from different angles, well, different simulation with just slightly tricks in the settings, but you see cool little pieces hanging everywhere. So it's very natural. All this was simulated at once. So it's pretty cool. 
And I could quickly try and break something here. Um, can I import an object? Luis pass me. Which is find it in the desktop. Go to demo. The spaceship. And this object has a ship and a couple of elements I'm not going to be using, but this ship has a, quite a few elements that are and everything. That is it's an awkward shape and in most cutters or choppers or fracturing tools it will be tricky to fracture at once. But now with the current fracturing tools we can go and say okay I want approximately 200 pieces uniform done. So if we hide the original one uh, we come here and change the faces so it's fractured in no time without a problem. I was talking about um, different fracturing tools and if I simply create a sphere and I can leave it there and I say okay I want this ship to have a hole there where the pieces have smaller elements and then gradually grow. So I select the object I say come here and by all means this is not going to be the final interface. We're going to work on it, the toolbar for all the fracture tools but just to illustrate I could say I want to fracture that um, ship by geometry using that sphere. I want to concentrate the pieces inside and this will be roughly the amount of pieces or the, the solution that I want for that uh, fracture to have and I want to split the channels so I can have uh, two objects as output. One is the, the object that interact with the sphere or the fracture bits that will interact with the sphere or the sphere area and the other is the, the remain of the ship. So yeah, if I simulate uh, breaking happens, I can hide the sphere and the original ship and we see that where the sphere was we have created tons of elements and then this uh, small ones gradually become bigger, bigger, bigger until we get different objects and as I said we get two objects. One is that, the other one is that. So these are the some of the enhancements that we have put in the fracturing bits in Caronte. So if I close that one we move to the final feature which is the licensing enhancement and uh, it isn't out of the the ability to have floating licenses for the GUI. Um, this again was an all-time request and especially for those that have multiple licenses and they want to manage them in a centralized way. And if you remember the picture that I show at the beginning with the um, uh, real pipeline, uh, looking at the global pipeline that uh, hosts the GUIs, the rent kit and the real nodes right now or until 2012 version we only had the real flow nodes and the real flow render kits licenses going via the next link license manager what we're going to do in this launch is to have uh, also the GUI license but this will be optional so if you're happy with the way we license the GUIs you don't need to uh, go via the license manager but if you think that it's better and we think that in many cases it will be better then you can use it via the license manager and that's all I have to say for now. So Q&A, Kevin, back to you and thank you very much for listening. We'll try to answer all your questions and uh, if not today, tomorrow or in the forums, we hope they will get answered. That's right. Um, uh, can you guys hear me? I think you guys can hear me. Uh, Gustavo, that was awesome. Um, I just want to let you guys know that there's a ton of questions that have been coming in and uh, we're going to take about maybe 10 minutes to answer them. Uh, if there are any other questions that have not been answered, we will do our best. We're going to forward these questions uh, to the Next Limit team, and they're going to answer it, and we're going to post it at our blog at Nail Edge. So uh, shall we get started? Let's do this. Um, I think I'll start from the top, and I'll assign the questions to you uh, as well, Gustavo. Let's see. Uh, do, do I need to talk? I mean, do, do we want the questions to be answered uh, live or with the microphone? Or, or? 
Uh, yeah, we're going to do 10 minutes of uh, answering okay. live on the microphone. Um, Victor and Luis will answer, are, are answering questions as well. So, um, okay, cool. Let's scroll down here. Yeah, see, there is a tons of questions. I mean, I have to scroll down, so uh, let's see. Give me a second. There's just so many of them. All right. Here's a good one. I think this one uh, everybody kind of wants to know. Um, when will uh, RealFlow 2013 be released? All right. Um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, the aim right now is to release in Q1. Uh, Q1 ends at the end of March, so let's say by the end of March. There you go. Um, by the end of March. That's pretty close. So if you guys can hang on there, um, yeah, well, I, we'll, no veg will probably, we'll work with no, next limit to carry this. I, I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm stuttering right now. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, here's a second question. Um, will there be a steep learning curve to learn RealFlow 2013 in comparison to RealFlow 2012? Not at all. Um, as I was showing, uh, if anything, it would be easier. Uh, RealFlow uh, with the relationship editor, we think that the, the understanding when you're creating a sync, what's going on is way easier. Um, either if you're using Python or if you're not using Python, you don't need to go with the RealFlow graphs to create complex things, but you will be able to because we will be hopefully having some, uh, we will share some high level or complex graphs that will do funky stuff and people can, can see them. Actually, can I show you something? Because I forgot. No, if you I want to do a live demo, yeah, of course, yeah, your, your screen is live, so uh, do what you will to okay. answer these questions. Yes. Okay, let me just show something that I forgot to show. And uh, this is something that um, one of our colleagues is working in, which is this. I just got this today. This is the real wave um, being deformed with the real flow graphs. I think it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it has some, I mean, the, the uh, statistical spectrum waves, which is basically a tension dot displacement, and then some particles are sticking to that uh, displacement, and it's using just two graphs to control that and the movement of the swirl. So to do something like this, we will, like in this case, we will have these graphs shared in the community. So hopefully, people will share their graphs and complex stuff that could only be done before by using Python scripting will be done by using real flow graphs and people will share it. All right. Uh, okay, moving on to the next question. Um, that answer the question. Alex, yeah, I think that answers. Um, Alexander wants to know where can we see the movies? Uh, I think this is a good plug for your community as well. Um, yeah, that's a question for okay. you. What, uh, what what movies? Sorry, what, what was that question? Um, where we can see the movies? I guess the examples. Um. Uh, the examples are, are online. Most of them are online already. You can see them uh, either in the YouTube channel. If you go to uh, RealFlow, uh, you go to YouTube at RealFlow Labs. You should be able to see all the all the examples that we have in there. I think there is a channel that has. All the hybrid ones, you see, they are here. And we hope to keep uploading videos pretty soon. So that will uh, be new features. Cool. Um, let's see. This is from Patrick. Uh, he wants to know if there are uh, any improvements in threading with 2013 to uh, more efficiently use the multi-core systems. Thanks, Patrick. Yes. Question. Yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. The, the new hybrid tool, uh, is way better than the old one in terms of multi-threading. You will be able to see your whatever number of cores you have most of the time on top compared to the old one. It, it always depends on the scene setup, but um, this one has a way better performance than the old ones. Um, let's see. Uh, James wants to know, uh, will you be able to Thanks. open projects from uh, earlier versions into 2013 from um, 2013 into older versions. So basically from 2012 to 2013. Yes, uh, it, it always will go forward. I mean, we will uh, try to keep compatibility going forward. Uh, it will be tricky to go backwards. So it, going backwards will be pr practically impossible unless you 
uh, export to XML format and edit the file so it doesn't include the things that were not there. And I'm not 100% sure that will work. So, uh, there might be a chance that that works, but coming forward, yes, you will be able to open 2012 inside 2013. Cool. Uh, Paul wants to know, uh, can I modify particle channels particle channels uh, individually, uh, such like uh, velocity, position, vortice, density, etc. Mm. Yeah, we hope that can be possible with grass. Yes, the answer is yes. All right. Uh, will RealFlow 2013 be GPU accelerated? There is GPU acceleration in the hybrid of flip solver. That's the only part that we have GPU acceleration right now using OpenCL. Cool. Uh, uh, Sean wants to know, will the learning edition of 2013 come out at the same time as the standard version? Also, will yep. there be any uh, added limitations with the learning edition? So, No, no, no. Uh, not that uh, we are thinking of right now. Uh, it will come out at the same time. And actually, we just uh, updated the, one of the contests that we had in, in the social channels uh, to make something similar to we, what we did with the real flows plus competition last summer. So when 2013 comes out, uh, that uh, contest that we had running over Christmas will get back in place uh, for the learning edition. So that's cool. That's um, with learning edition. I don't think we're going to clamp anything. Gotcha. Uh, Yusuf wants to know, um, you probably can't do this, I don't know if you guys can do this now, but he wants to know if you could uh, render a realistic hybrido uh, water material step by step, please. So, uh, Water material, you don't uh, need to worry about water materials. You just get to Maxwell, get uh, the material that we provide, and that will work as water. You can ask Victor Sanchez, he's our expert in Flow Maxwell, and it will take 10 seconds for him to create a, a water material. I mean, the ones that we, we will provide will probably work. And it's pretty simple to get a working water material. We'll try to, to have uh, examples on the website so people can download. But uh, the materials that we will be included in Cyber for 2013 will be more than enough to create uh, realistic because Maxwell is realism. Got it. And uh, you guys can probably find, uh, Victor is probably on the communities too that you guys have there at uh, Next Limit as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Yeah, so you guys can, uh, if you guys have questions there, ask Victor as well uh, and Luis who are probably on the uh, communities over at uh, Next Limit. Um, okay, moving on. Um, let's see. So some of the more complicated questions, we're going to post it at the Novage blog and we're going to share the, uh, the questions and answers there as well. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Christoph wants to know, uh, are there any efforts to use uh, real flow render nodes with, within the Rebus farm? Uh, we keep talking about using it in Rebus. The thing is, it's tricky to um, work with simulations that um, are big in terms of space, this space, uh, because bandwidth is always an issue. So um, we keep looking into supporting render farm, but this is a tricky issue. I mean, you will probably need a huge bandwidth or will have to be uh, talking to delivery uh, via, I don't know, uh, picking up hard drives full of the real flow data back and forth. Or it kind of makes sense if you render at the same place. So if you simulate and render there, it might be an option, but we'll have to look into that. I mean, we always keep looking into uh, what's going to happen with the render farm. There is more and more cloud services and render farm services. So that is something that we, we keep in mind. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Imran wants to know, will the third-party plugins example, the ones from wet work, uh, well, wet work, work for 2012, work for 2013? Uh, the plugins are expensive. Uh, yeah, so uh, will those third-party uh, plugins work? They will have to be recompiled, and I guess the guys will recompile it. We, we keep in touch with these guys, most of them. So that shouldn't be a problem. I guess they will, if you have bought the existing version for 2012, they will give you the updated for 2013, I don't know. Because we, we don't deal with them directly, but I would assume that uh, they will update them for the current version. Okay, um, Diego wants to know, I think this is a good one. I'm sure that people want to try it out. Uh, can we beta test the new RealFlow 2013? 
uh, can I better test it? <laughs> we don't have a beta yet. But, uh, we are still in alpha state, we're close to beta and uh, we will see what's going on once we have the beta and see if we can open it a bit more. Uh, right now we have some um, close people that we always uh, work with uh, testing the early versions but it isn't an open beta and it will be tricky to, for us to manage an open beta. We will see what it can be done. Uh, if you can send us an email, we'll talk. All right, Diego, I hope you heard that live. Uh, send an email to uh, Gustavo and the Next Limit team, and uh, you guys will talk about that. All right, so um, Robert wants to know, um, will there be a plugin for uh, Luxology Moto 601, and or will it be Alembic interchangeable? Alembic interchangeable, for sure. I don't think we need to make, I mean, one of the reasons for implementing Alembic is trying to uh, use as much as we can open source format, so uh, the interconnectivity between any platform becomes easier. So we don't need to work, out. I don't think uh, we need to work on a more specific plugin, but try to make sure that whatever Alembic they have in place work with ours. Cool, and then uh, last question. Um, okay, uh, I hope this is a good one. Um, David wants to know, are there any plans for a Python-based job manager uh, submitter? Uh, the job manager is Python based. So you, you can, I mean, there is an implementation. If, if you, I don't know if it comes with the, with the um, uh, installation or we do have the code and we share it, but I'm pretty sure we have a wrapper that is based in Python. So you can use your own job manager by using the Python wrapper if that's what she is asking. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Um, in that case, uh, that that ends our Q and A session. Um, and there, there is a there, there there are a lot of t uh, questions that have been posted and forwarded. Um, uh, Vic, not even Victor and Luis can answer all of them, but we will take time after the webinar to post them at our blog at No Bench. And you can also find these answers too, as well on uh, Next Limits uh, online community. So uh, check that out. Okay. Uh, all right, so moving on, uh, Gustavo, uh, I'm going to switch presenter to me right now. Okay. Cool. Let's see. Uh, change presenter to actually. Mm, give me a second here. All right. All right, can you guys see my screen here? Yes, we can. Awesome. Cool. So um, thank you so much, Gustavo, uh, from the guys at NoVeg. Thank you uh, also, uh, Angel, who one of the developers here, uh, Victor, and also Luis for showing up and answering the questions that we have. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and hosting this webinar with us. And thank you, the attendees, for registering and signing up and showing up today. Uh, so for more information about Next Limit Technologies, RealFlow 2013, uh, which is coming out in March. Uh, this is their webpage at realflow.com. Um, RealFlow 2013 gives you the abilities to create large scale fluid simulations that will match any on the market straight out of the box. So with RealFlow, you don't need to be a software programmer to set up a fantastic simulation. Just choose your settings and you're ready to go. The latest version of RealFlow 2013 gives you an unprecedented level of realism with the power to control and customize every aspect of your scene to get exactly what you want. Um, more information, go to RealFlow for sure. Check it out there. And as the online, uh, leading online software design store, uh, we pretty much have the best prices around. RealFlow is available from us, the latest version right now, uh, 2012, as a digital uh, digital delivery to the United States. In addition, you could pay uh, zero sales tax. Feel free to contact our sales specialist, Bob, at bob at com. And if you have any questions about RealFlow 2013, please forward them there. And uh, we're going to be working with Next Limit to uh, make sure that RealFlow 2013 is part of our latest catalog as well. Also, um, if you have any um, questions or you want to be part of a uh, online discussion, we have an online place, three um, online places exactly, uh, WikiCAD, Vector Working, and Rhino Jungle. Um, you can join one or you can join all of them. 
uh, not only are communities a place to discuss the latest industry related news, it is a community where even the developers uh, show up from time to time to answer your questions. Uh, don't miss this opportunity to interact with other like-minded professionals. Signing up is a breeze and with that you have access to a weekly community newsletter. Uh, for access to discussions that matter, register today. Um, I also want to mention that if you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, want to throw some feedback to us on ways we can improve uh, NoVeg's webinars and what we're doing, um, feel free, don't hesitate to email me uh, at kevin at noveg.com or bob at noveg.com as well. And uh, here's a plug for the upcoming webinar, uh, the new Cinema 4D R14 features hosted by Paul Babb. Um, you get a sneak peek at uh, Release 14's powerful new features from fast and intuitive sculpting tools, enhanced dynamics, new camera tools, and many others. Whether you're a visualization artist, motion designer, illustrator, or animator, you'll find something to love about R14. Uh, Maxon President and CEO Paul will be here uh, to present this upcoming webinar live and to answer your questions. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity and uh, sign up, register today at novage.com forward slash webinar forward slash 63. And also to answer some of the questions here, uh, some people kind of left early. Uh, if you want to rewatch this webinar, you can, um, and all our other previous webinars, uh, you can check it out at Noveg Webinar Series channel through Vimeo and YouTube. So stay tuned over there. Subscribe. Uh, lastly, follow us on Twitter by our handle at Noveg Store, where we'll share with you the latest buzz worth the industry news, trends, and promos that we are offering at Noveg. Uh, join the conversation and follow us today. And on behalf of the team at Noveg, um, we want to thank you guys and uh, Ciao. Uh, Gustavo, do you have any last words? Hey, sure. Um, I just want to say uh, that it's work for the guys that uh, are working very hard on Reactor 2013 to make sure that we deliver by, as I was saying, the uh, end of Q1. I wanted to say a big thank you for to Angel, who is the uh, head of development, uh, Luis Miguel, uh, Alex, Enrique, Hilco, Victor. Uh, also the Caronto team, Nuria and Agus, and on behalf of all of us, thank you for watching and we hope that you are waiting for the best clear flow ever. And thank you for knowledge for having us today here as well. Thank you and thank you guys for signing up. All right, we'll still be live, so stop recording now.